Well, immediately, which is, I love this because immediately their eyes light up and they say, well, so how does this relate to me and my company or me and my office? And, and it's, oh, it's easy. This is a no brainer. It's like, you need to know the, the needs of your employees. Like when was the last time you knew what their home life was like? You know, what's, what's the name of their dog? Like where, you know, where, where they do last weekend. And the minute you find out their needs and you know their story and you know where they maybe want to go, then you become an enabler. That's, that's really what I am. Like, and I know that that's thought of like as a negative term, but I'm absolutely an enabler of my bees. I'm an enabler of the people at work. I ne- enable them to be the best they possibly can be. I'm Steve Shenbaum from Game On Nation, and this is the Good To Do Podcast. Thank you for joining us. If you're listening or maybe watching on YouTube, we are amplifying really cool, unique, kind voices in a variety of industries, and we are trying to learn practical, simple techniques so we can apply them, good techniques, people that are doing good works. That's why we call it the Good To Do Podcast. So uh, my next guest, uh, a friend of mine for many years, I have to share that disclaimer, but I'm going to read... Uh, Jay Williams' bio. It's so unique. Uh, And you'll see it in the first sentence. Jay has been obsessed with pollinators for the last 12 years. How many times have we said pollinators? You'll see why in a second. He and his wife run Williams Honey Farm LLC based in Franklin, Tennessee. In addition to producing award-winning honey, Williams Honey Farm works to educate and inspire our next generation of beekeepers. That's right, beekeepers through schools, online mentoring, public education events, and so much more. Uh, While inspiring new beekeepers is the ultimate goal, Jay is also speaking all over to audiences of non-beekeepers, and that's one of the reasons why we have Jay as our guest. Uh, Talking about modern-day beehive, check this, and what it can teach us all about life, family, work, and community. Cool. All right, when he's not chasing around or being chased by the bees, Jay spends his time on a fire engine, because that is right. Not only is he a beekeeper, he is a firefighter. We'll talk briefly about that as well. You can find him at williamshoneyfarm.com and also check out his journey uh, at Williams Honey TN. Jay Williams, man, it is so, so good to have you on the Good To Do podcast. Thank you, friend. You got it, buddy. I have been waiting my whole life to be here today. So my life is complete. I'm done. I, I don't know what else to do after today. I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll just go on vacation. What if it just cut out right now? Like, <laughs> all right, that was it. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. It's only a two Love you, mean it. No, Jay, you I it. had as well. And we'll dive into some really fun questions. I'm so excited from your perspective to learn about beekeeping, uh, pollinators, colony, all of it. And I want everyone on listening to, to laugh. I do. We enjoy humor. You and I both uh, follow the laugh with, not at rule. And we love humor, but also to um, be able to write something down and say, wow, that's practical. Like I learned something like I actually can apply what Jay shared. I do want to add one more thing before we dive in. My mother still believes you are a tech (laughs) genius. Let me explain something to everyone listening. Jay helped fix a VCR 30 years ago at my mother's home cabin. And to this day, when I bring your name up, she's like, oh, Jay Williams, he is a technical genius. And I'm like, mom, he fixed a visa. I forget it. So I just want you to know you ingrained. Do you remember that? I do in Idlewild. Remember that? Yeah. And and you were like, yeah, yeah, mom, I got it. I got it. She's like, no, 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 no. He's a genius. Shemmy, he's a genius. Remember she kept saying that? Shemmy, she, she's, he's a genius. She, she thinks you work for like NASA now. She's like, well, maybe I do. Okay. <laughs> fixed a visa. Okay. I, I, Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, whatever. I love her. She's amazing. Tell her I said, Hey, I will. She said, she said, she loves you. Hey, listen, we are talking, you know, the beekeeping and so much more. I want to back up for a little bit and ask you sort of a tee up, like sort of who, who have been your mentors um, when it comes to leadership communication and, and even more than that, like what are something they have in common? Is there a, is there a common denominator to the people that have impacted you that have gotten you to where you're kind of uniquely a creating like a bit of a niche. And I'm curious if, if, if there's a common denominator between those folks that have influenced you. Yeah. You know, it's funny that 
I never thought I'd end up where I am today, right? I, I really, you, you can't really quite figure out or, or map out as much as you try, right? And that's that's something we're going to talk about in a little bit because the bees teach me that every single day. You know, you think you're you're going to end up in a certain spot and and you don't quite end up, and that's okay. Um, and most of the the mentors and leaders that I've followed, uh, you know, I think they they follow that same sort of idea. And and I didn't really see it at the time. I haven't you know been like, oh, let me write that down. But when I look back at all the sort of the, the people that have influenced me over the years, uh, you know, they, they have sort of a common trait of they try and be humble at all times. Cool. They, when they screw up, they say they screwed up, which mm. I try and do at all times. Uh, and, you know, and they're inspiring and they are, uh, they're supportive. Um, it, it's, it's what I'm trying to emulate in every school I teach, every, you know, person I mentor, everything. Uh, it's, it's all about telling someone like, I've been where you are, and you're gonna make it, you're gonna be okay. And those mentors and the, and the leaders that I had in the fire service and, and when I was in the film business, all of them were saying, you're doing okay, You know, keep at it, you got a great attitude, we're gonna get through this, whatever challenge it was. Uh, and, and that's definitely definitely a big cornerstone of what I do in my teaching practice uh, and, and where I speak. I love that. I wrote down humility, owning your mistakes and being supportive. I think that could be uh, um, activated in any industry. And, and you mm -hmm. have, at that essence as a personality, because I've known you for so many years. So, but I want people to realize that, that we've complicated this a lot. And it really, if we simplified it to thinking about humility, owning mistakes, being supportive. Wow. And, I, and we'll talk a little bit more about how those words play in to you navigating a colony, if I'm using the right language and beekeeping, but to start. And I, again, if, if you're, if you're listening, I mean, I want to wrap our mind around this. Jay was in the film industry actually, and we'll talk briefly about that, is a firefighter in Tennessee and is now he and his wife are running a beekeeping company, not just to make honey, but to use these techniques to teach leadership, communication, community. Yeah. Am I mm -hmm. using the Absolutely. right Absolutely. Yeah. Did yeah. Hive mind. How did you transfer? So how, you, I get film production. You went to Northwestern. You were a firefighter. Then how do you make that leap to beekeeping? I'm telling you, it, it actually all makes sense in my uh, little head here. Like they all sort of, they all sort of lead in the same direction, right? Okay. When I was in the film business, I was working on TV shows like like Jag. If you ever heard of Jag, um, or really action-packed shows, right. and there was chaos all around us, right? And we had to focus as a group on some sort of goal, some sort of task, and you had to tune out all the craziness that was going on, all the explosions and and uh, gunfire and whatnot okay. to get the shot. You had to focus on it. Well, then cut to firefighting, right? Well, it was it was an easy easier transition for me because again, you're in an uncontrolled environment, you know, fairly chaotic when it really happens when when things go bad, and you've got to focus. And you know, it's it's more life and death than the film business, let's be honest. But you've got to focus when it gets really uh, really hairy, really crazy. Okay. Well, then cut to me and you know the beehive when I have a hundred thousand venomous insects flying around me that all of a sudden get upset at what I'm doing. Well, guess what I'm doing? I'm focusing on the task in front of me. I'm not letting all the buzzing and all the craziness get in my ears because I'm wearing a suit, but also <laughs> the, uh, the noise is so bad. And again, I'm focusing on what's in front of me and I'm letting go of the things that can't, that I can't, you know, uh, change because they're, they're just out of my control. I think a lot of the things that, that you may get to, or that, you know, are important here is you know, these are really simple lessons. Like this, this is not like, I don't think I need to write some big novel, some big book. Like this is basic stuff, but sometimes, you know, the most basic things are things I, I need to hear every day or I need to pass on to people every single Come day. on. Jay, I have to tell you, that was my most dangerous question I asked. You <laughs> answered it so coherently. I have to just say what you just said. You just basically <laughs> said focus around chaos and you made it clear. You focused around chaos in the production film industry you focus around chaos around being a firefighter and you focus around chaos in uh, leading and nurturing and developing bees. So brilliant. I also love you leaning in on simplicity. So I agree with you a hundred percent. We've complicated this. So, wow. When you entered the third phase after production, after firefighting, beekeeping, focusing on chaos, can you maybe share a few simple mistakes that you made in the learning process? 100%. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I'm continuing to make mistakes, right? Oh, yeah. I, I would never want to say, hey, I've got it all figured out. You know, mm -hmm. look at my perfect Instagram feed. <laughs> that's, that's like quintessential, like, no, 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 no. Like, I am definitely still screwing up. But here's the thing. 
in, in my opinion, I am a rookie for life. That's how I approach this. And this was taught to me in the fire service. I am a rookie for life. Every single day, I'm learning something new. And guess what? In beekeeping, this tiny little bug, right? This little tiny bug with six legs and a bunch of wings and like all these different colored eyes and blah, blah, blah. It's teaching me something new every single day. And it sounds weird, right? I mean, it, it's a little funky. Like this tiny insect is teaching me lessons. And, you know, a lot of people think we're a little weird uh, from, by hanging around all these bees. And, uh, you know, I, I go out in public and I talk about my virgins going out and mating in the yards and <laughs> stuff around there. And yeah, it's a little weird. Uh, a my little wife doesn't really love when I talk about that. But here's the thing, like it's, this is nature. It's right in front of me. It's very simple. And the lessons are very simple too. Um, you know, again, like beekeeping has, to, it keeps me humble every single day. Cause, cause I haven't figured it out. I really, I haven't. Um, and you know, when I go and, and I'm, you know, sitting on a fire engine and I'm telling my crew what to do, you know, there's a lot of times I need to be listening more than talking. And that's again, same thing with beekeeping. Like I have to listen to what these bees are telling me rather than me decide this is exactly what you're going to do. And let me tell you, you know, go do it in, in the end, it never works that way because you're dealing wow. with a wild, wild animal, wild insect. So, so let's go where you went there. <laughs> I'm just thinking about you, like at a, a social event, like, so what do you do? What do you do? Yeah. Well, oh gosh. <laughs> Because be I get mad because I'm like, the virgins weren't out. <laughs> they, they need to be out mating. What are they doing at home? <laughs> yeah. And your wife's like, honey, I, I don't think that they fully understood yeah. what you were saying. Yeah, totally. And, Check yeah. yeah. When you you mentioned the fire department and, and what are some lessons that you are learning as a beekeeper that you are able to transfer as a uh, a firefighter and, you know, leading and communicating with the the men and women on your crew? So again, I'm still building, still trying yeah. to figure it out. I've been doing it for around 20 years, um, and and I feel like I just started yesterday. But mm -hmm. there's many lessons. Um, you know, jumping into one that really stands out is in my. This is my opinion. In my opinion, a leader is, like I said, humble, but yep. is really truthful. And you cannot like I make a promise to my guys at work that I'm going to do everything I can so that they can go home health healthy and safe. And then when I go into my bees, I make a promise to take care of them. Um, you know, the beekeeper's promise is, is, is what's talked about. And my bees are relying on me to do my best uh, and to make, you know, as, as good decisions as I can. When I go to the fire service, my crew is, you know, relying on me to be truthful, be honest and make great decisions based on what they tell me or based on the, you know, the, the information that we're getting in. Um, and I feel like if you, the lesson that I've learned is, you know, it's not that I haven't been truthful, but if I, if I'm not truthful to myself and I think I know it all, uh, you can run out of truth right away or run out of trust right away from, you know, from making the right decisions. And I think that's a huge, huge challenge uh, for a lot of people in the leadership position. They think, you know, ah, I just got promoted, right? I just became a lieutenant or a captain in the fire service. Therefore, I know it all. And the truth is that no one does. And and once you get in that spot, you look around, you're like, hey, wait a second. Like, where where was the manual? <laughs> where, you know, what can I refer to uh, here to, to make the best decisions? And in reality, uh, it's a constant you know, manual that you're writing. There, there is no, you know, ultimate, this is exactly what you need to do uh, as a leader. And, uh, and I've learned that the hard way and, you know, continue to, to try and perfect that skill, you know, as much as possible. Uh, Jay, I mean, I'm listening to you. I'm like, this is when we thought about the good to do podcast, I'm not kidding. You were one of the first names that came to mind. It, it, no, it's fast. Well, your, your passion for and care for what you do is so clear in your voice in your tone and your sound. It's also extraordinarily unique. It may not be as unique to you now because you, you've been doing it for so long, but I want to go into the, the, the beehive. Okay. Can, let's go there for a little while. I, I mean, we could stay there forever. And please, I just want to remind everyone listening or watching, like, this is really new to most of us, Jay. And when you talk about the things that you're learning uh, about trust and leadership and care and oaths, can you talk a little bit more about what that looks like? when you are going in to navigate and, and, and nurture the bees. So I think that a good thing to do would be back up a second and think, all right, well, let's make sure that everybody knows how a beehive operates, right? So a beehive is made up of, of three different bees, three different types of bees. So there's a worker bee, which is female, about 80% of the colony. We would be nowhere without females. Literally, they get the job done. Come uh, on, Amen. Please. Amen. <laughs> Hello. <That's> so great. <laughs> Great it's lesson. True. So absolutely, I'd be nowhere without uh, the, the females in my life and in the bee yep. colony. So worker bees are females. There is one queen. Queen is obviously female in the entire colony. So a colony can range between about 60,000 to 100,000 bees. Wow. And then there's also uh, drone bees, male bees. That's it. Just three types of bees. 
Now, a worker bee, uh, it, it, it actually is really fascinating. So a worker bee hatches out and immediately fills a certain role. Uh, and throughout its, her life, she actually uh, graduates to different roles, much like you and I do uh, in, in this world. So you, you hatch out and all of a sudden you're like, you're a nurse bee taking care of the other, um, you know, newly hatching out, uh, bees. Then you become an attendant where you're sort of taking care of the queen, making sure she's fed. Then you become like a undertaker for the colony and then a guard bee. And eventually you become a forager. It's like the senior in high school or college. Uh, and so like throughout those roles, they have to like, they have to fill that role and, and be in that position to the death, right? So like they are willing to lay down their lives for the greater good of the colony. And, you know, if they don't like their neighbor, like they don't let that affect their job and what they have to do. Uh, and I think it's a great lesson for you and I. It's like, we are part of a, a greater goal here. We're part of a, a common bond of getting something done, X, Y, and Z. And, you know, the, the more that we can focus on that common goal rather than what am I getting right now? What, what's, what's in it for me? And, you know, how am I gonna, you know, get through this world or whatever? Um, the bees don't do that. And I think it's an amazing lesson for you and I. Not only that, but communication is huge in a beehive. So that yeah. one queen inside the colony, she's, you know, running around doing her thing. Well, she's constantly via pheromones telling everybody else, I'm here, I'm laying eggs, everybody's good, mama's home, you know, that sort of thing. Wow. And the minute you take her out of the colony, everybody gets upset because that communication breaks down because all the, the, the messages aren't, aren't getting around. Um, and, and so again, like they're all sort of communicating via pheromones. And then the other side, that's really cool. Have you ever heard of the waggle dance? Do you know what the waggle dance is? No, I'm not going to do it. Even though we're on video, I, I swear I wouldn't do the waggle dance for you. Um, <laughs> it involves, now. it involves shaking a lot of booty. Uh, okay, that's, that's the, the short version. Fair. So we, we've done that for many years on the dance floor out in California. We won't do it here. Um, so, uh, so the waggle dance is super important, right? So the bee flies out to some, you know, flower or nectar source or whatever, okay. comes back to the colony and does this waggle dance where she literally traces out the shape of a heart and the bottom of the heart points via, you know, the sun is your orientation. So the sun is, and then you point the bottom of that heart to where the nectar source is uh, and tells everybody else where to go. Literally the bee that's doing the craziest wildest dance is usually the one that gets everybody's attention. Uh, and, and this is done in the dark, by the way, literally it's inside the beehive in the dark and they're all talking to each other. You know, this little bee this is telling so everybody wild. else what's, what's going on. Wait. Is it really a heart? It's literally the shape of yes. a heart? Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. You couldn't yeah. script this in a movie. Exactly. Yet. I was just going to say, you can't make this stuff up. You can't. So, you can't. So the heart is literally pointing to where you want to go. Well, okay, let's take it one step further. Okay. So every single spring, uh, you know, just in nature, everything wants to multiply, right? That's just how it works. We want to make more of ourselves. So there's more bees that, you know, more bee colonies um, that the bee wants to uh, propagate. So Every spring, usually, and sometimes in the fall in, in my area, the, the beehive will try and swarm. Well, how do you get, how do you convince like half this colony to up and leave and go and start a new, you know, new, new home, new hive? How do you coordinate, you know, 30,000, 40,000 bees to go to the same spot? Think about that communication that has to take place. So, you know, you got scout bees going out trying to find that, you know, that hole in the tree or, you know, the hole in the house sometimes where their, their next home would be, you know, a perfect spot. So they're all trying to find that perfect spot. They're flying back to the old colony and saying, hey, everybody, look, I got a great, you know, spot for everybody to go to. They're communicating in the middle of this chaos, right? Wow. They're communicating in the middle of, you know, a whole, whole lot going on inside the colony. Well, here's the lesson, in my opinion. So the lesson here is that bees are actually, they're amazing communicators in that, they're speaking, but they're also better listeners than they are speakers. So they're, they're coming back and you have a thousand bees trying to communicate, hey, I think I got the best you know, place to go. But in reality, what happens is over a 10 minute span, all these bees become in unison and they all start dancing the same dance to go to that same spot where, where the hive is, you know, the future hive is going to be because they are listening more than they are. They're literally, like, I think the lesson here too is, and I, I'm, I'm no expert at this, I'm still practicing, but you know when you're talking to somebody and you're waiting for them to finish so that you can ask what you wanna ask or you're trying to like counter their point or whatever, the bees don't do that. They, they're, they're much better than that. They literally, they focus and listen 100% on what your message is versus waiting for your turn to talk. Uh, and, and I think that's a great lesson that I need to you know constantly remind myself. And, and I think that the listeners should hear it too. Like this is basic stuff and yet 
guys, it's so relevant. <laughs> you say that it's so relevant. I love that you said, and the lesson is, because I think that's where one of your giftings is going to be, Jay, is to take all of this and not just sell honey, but to share some simple practical techniques to children, to corporations, to anyone. I feel like this message is, is, is uh, relevant to any industry, but I love that you said the lesson is it's funny. We, we have a term and you said it actually, uh, listen, don't wait to talk, um, which, which listen, we all are guilty of waiting to talk at times. I, I picture you sharing and I have two questions. It's similar. One is what has been the response of young children when you share some of the things you just went through? Cause you shared so much focusing around chaos, being a rookie for life. Here's the lesson. Listen, don't wait to talk. So I'm going to first start with share with us. If you could maybe a funny question that was asked or a fun interaction from children when you talk about this concept. And then I'd love that same question to be when you, when you talk to adults, to corporate America or, or leaders in, in a, in a, in a business, go for it. So the, I've had quite a few experiences with, um, with teaching kids, teaching, you know, little groups of kids. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what's, uh, what's going on. Uh, I, I built a trailer. Um, we call it the BMV trailer. Uh, and, and literally it's, it's me inside of a giant screened in box, like a, like a zoo animal almost. And the, the beehives are inside this box with me and the kids, classes of kids will come up and stick their hands through these gloves and the sides yep. of the walls and be able to pick up the frames of bees and look at them. It's really cool. Wow. We call it the Very BMV. Cool. We go to all the schools in the area and, and events and stuff. Well, one of these kids one day was like, this is amazing. Um, I didn't know honey came from a beehive. Yeah. I thought it came from the store. And I'm like, you know, it's like, I can't believe we're having this conversation, but you know, we've, we've missed something. We, something has sort of gone out of whack here okay. and we need to bring it back. And that's the way to bring it back. It'd be like, all right, I want you to grab this frame of bees and this frame of honey. And I want you to bring it up right to your face, two inches away. And I want you to take a big old sniff and it smells amazing, right? They taste the honey right out of the hive uh, with their great. finger. And one of the questions a kid asked was like, how do you milk the bees? Oh, wait, stop. <laughs> the, the, honey, the, the honey is made at supermarkets. We need to use yes. that myth. And then, well, that's a good question, Jay. That was actually on my list. How do you milk the bees, Jay? How we have you... lots of these little tubes that we hook up. Very, like at the, very, uh, yeah, just... very carefully, very carefully. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't want to shame a young, a young, uh, you don't shame uh, young. No, not at all. But, and it's hard to keep a straight face. But I think that's a great indication of, you know, kind of where we are right now. We, yeah. we, we need to do a little adjustment. You need to go to the chiropractor and get a little adjustment here because we need to know that honey comes from a beehive, not from the supermarket. It's so good, Jay. And and, and then so let's yeah. switch it now. I love that was really special. I love <laughs> that. Uh the kids. So how do you fit into the supermarket? We we get the honey to the supermarket. <laughs> what about adults? What are, listen, it's new to me. Like when you're talking right now, I'm learning. I'm hoping everyone who's listening in is learning too. This is fascinating. Again, don't ever get desensitized to your unique industry, Jay, because it, 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 I don't think it will ever get old, uh, these concepts and messages. What about adults? What, are, what What's their reaction? What are some interesting questions or feedback you've gotten when you share these leadership, communication, community uh, messages with that audience? Yeah, it's funny that when you speak in front of like a company or a corporation, they, there's a certain type of question that you get. And it's always um, preceded by like, when I was a kid, we had tons of bees everywhere, or I helped my, you know, my father-in-law, you know, raise bees and it was a blast. And we, I haven't seen bees since then, or something's been lacking since then, um, you know, to, up to this day. And I, I mean, that's true. You know, we, we are constantly losing bees uh, and we're in, we're in deep trouble. And so everybody sort of gravitates towards that. Hey, I heard the bees are in trouble. Why? And you know, what do I do to help? Uh, which is kind of cool. And then right after I tell them what they can do to help, you know, we immediately start diving into, you know, some lessons from the beehive. And, um, and then immediately when I'll say like, you know, an example is you need to know the needs of your bees. You need to know like, what can you give them right now? What, you know, what are they needing? What is your hive needing? And this day and age, that is so important because our bees are in so much more of a fragile state than they've ever been. So unfortunately, you know, we have actually created a, an environment where our bees are more reliant on us than ever before. This wild insect is now becoming domesticated, which is actually weakening it. So long wow. story short, yeah. um, this bee really relies on me and I need to know what its needs are. Well, immediately, which is, I love this because immediately their eyes light up and they say, well, 
so how does this relate to me and my company or me and my office? And and it's mm. it's easy. This is a no brainer. It's like you need to know the the needs of your employees. Like when was the last time you knew what their home life was like? You know, what's what's the name of their dog? Like where you know where what did they do last weekend? And the minute you find out their needs and you know their story and you know where they maybe want to go, then you become an enabler. That's that's really what I am. Like and I know that that's thought of like as a negative term, but I'm absolutely an enabler of my bees. I'm an enabler of the people at work. I ne- enable them to be the best they possibly can be. Well, you know, say, that's what I try to do. Enabling good qualities and good giftings is actually a positive. Oh, that's Jay. It's so wonderful. I wrote down listening and also the needs of others. So I am going to kind of get in that corporate uh, mindset and ask you though, how do you find out the needs of your bees when you have a completely different communication uh, process with, um, with the bee? You spend a lot of time around them and you listen. Um, you, you spend as much time as possible observing and not trying to judge. Um, you know, you sit back and you, you know, it's amazing when you just listen and when you sit there and you smell and you take it all in. Um, you know, I, I, I often say that I never feel more connected to God in this earth than when I'm surrounded by, you know, a million venomous insects. It's, it's totally true. I, I just, the more that I'm around the chaos, actually, the more that I can focus on what's in front of me, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because it's going to stick with me for the rest of my life. But I I gravitate towards that chaotic scene because I think there's a lacking. There's a there's not enough people that can focus on what's in front of you to get the job done. And I I mean I'm not getting political in any way, but we're we're struggling with this sort of thing in our society right now. You know, yeah. trying to focus on what do we need to do right in front of us instead of the chaos around us. Come on, so. Jay. I mean, you said it at the beginning. Your JAG production firefighting and beekeeping you connected it all in like two sentences being focused around chaos it is something that i encourage you to be able to share with others and if people are listening or watching i'm hoping they'll be able to write down some basic practical techniques because you're what you're talking about you know what's interesting everything you're talking about is in us as human beings it's inherently Definitely. in us none of what you're sharing is like expensive i mean i know there's equipment and there and, and you have your 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 the, the 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 car that you go in and the kids visit but like what you're ta- discussing is observing ju- not judging listening figuring out their needs spending time so i want to ask you though when you're listening when you're in the beehive uh, what are you listening for uh, you talked about smell but let's go into like the senses a little bit if, if you sure. can i think it's interesting too because most people are not seeing us right now they're listening to this because i'm picturing you having to listen and smell and touch and feel their needs. Can you talk a little bit about what you're looking for? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So a few things. When, I am, uh, when I'm working the bees, I take the top off of the, the colony. It's called the telescoping cover. I take the telescoping cover off the colony and immediately you're met with this, this rush of smell. And it's okay. different depending on the time of year, the bees, the area, all that sort of thing. That smell can be the honey flow. So is there any you know, nectar coming in? And at least in my area, it's it's a vibrant smell. It's amazing. I, I love the honey in Tennessee because usually it has a really, it's like a fine wine. It's got like the locust beginning that's really sweet. And then it's got a middle clover and then a basswood end, like a great a- aftertaste. And that smell is the same way. It just freaking hits you, man. And it's, and it's great. So it wakes you up. Well, not only that, but if things are wrong, you'll smell things wrong. And, and immediately you'll know. Uh, you know, if it's if it smells foul or some other things, you know immediately you got a problem and you got to dive deeper. Uh, and and then if you don't have the smell issue, if you listen to bees talk to you, and I know this sounds weird, it's kind of crazy, but literally my bees know what I look like, they know what I smell like, and they talk to me, and they talk to me through buzzing. Wow. And so you can tell immediately when you open up that colony if it's a quiet hum, everybody's chill, everything's great, keep on going, do your thing. If it is loud and they're uh, angry or obnoxious, just a little higher pitch uh, that's constant, uh, then you know something's going on. Either there's a pest or a raccoon or a nearby neighbor that's been spraying chemicals or whatever it is, they'll let you know that they're upset or the queen's missing. You know, you'll know immediately something's going on because again, you're sort of listening to the background noise. Um, so, you know, there's there's the smell, there's the, the feel. Um, you know, when you're in the hive and you're lifting those frames of bees out, the bees will actually give you a little bit of a warning if they're upset with you and it's like a tap. So literally they'll fly and they'll almost like kamikaze your veil, but they, they won't sting you. Obviously it's just like a tap, like tap, 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 tap. And what they're saying is like, Hey, you know, chill out. <laughs> You're going too fast. Or like they can tell when I'm rushed, when I'm upset, 
uh, you know, it's just like, like horse, you know, like if you're, you're riding a horse, they can tell yeah. how you feel and they react accordingly. It's, it's amazing. I'm sure Jay, you're so smart that it almost can be overwhelming how much of this beekeeping world can apply to life. It, it, it's, it's not like what can apply. It's almost like you have to put like a, a topper on the faucet. Cause it's, it's almost <laughs> everything, right? Am I right? Like this is totally, this is yeah. everything yeah. can apply that you're talking about listening don't getting distracted by the noise, but at the same time, listening for something that's concerning. Don't try to fix everything right away. Yeah. But maybe yeah, absolutely. Breathe and assess and slowly maybe go step by step to find out what the, the cause of the concern is. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the, the, one of the lessons I learned right in the beginning was if you don't know what to do, stop what you're doing <laughs> and so close the hive up and wait a second and the bees will figure it out and come back the next day. Like, Hold like on, I got it, Jay. You've got like five book titles, by the way, <laughs> that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal. I'll give you credit. Um, okay, guys, thanks. If you don't know what you're doing, stop <laughs> what you're doing. <laughs> don't do it. Yeah. Stop doing it. Don't do it. The bees will figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. And eventually. So crush your colony, maybe. I love that. If you don't know what you're doing, stop doing what you're doing. All right. Listen, this is, you kind of address this with the worker bee, queen bee, and drone in terms of hierarchy. But I had an interesting thought. This was a kind of a predetermined question uh, for you because I know you personally. Is there a sibling hierarchy in the bee colony? Like with Kimmy being your oldest, Ashley being your youngest, you're in the middle. Is there a sense of age and hierarchy within the colony? And how does that, how is that dynamic? Um, I mean, yeah, there, there's a little bit of a hierarchy. I mean, the, the interesting thing, though, it, it's going to get a little complicated. So, you know, if you're if you hatch out first, you know, you're a little bit more of a senior and, you know, you're taking care of the youngins, you know, that sort of thing. And you eventually graduate to, to forager. Um, and, you know, in my situation, you know, Kim's the first and um, and then, you know, I came afterwards. So I sort of follow her lead. Uh, but I think all of us fill a certain role uh, in the family. So. Mm -hmm. You know, and the same thing in a bee colony when, you know, when you are in the role of, uh, you know, a nurse a bee or an attendant, again, you have to focus on the role in front of you um, and not try and, you know, you have if people respect your, your hierarchy. You know, they respect your, your position in the colony and you have to respect everybody else's. Interesting. Um, and, you know, I, I actually apply that to the fire service. Like I'm I'm buddies with people I work with. But when I'm at work, I have to fill that role. Like I have to, you know, be in that role of the officer. I have to be the guy in charge. And even though my buddy and I might have been, you know, kayaking yesterday, well, today he's got to do what I, I say. You know, there is a hierarchy we need to follow. Uh, and, you know, it's sort of like an acting role. You've got to fill that role. You've got to follow that position that you're in um, in order to, for, you know, for things to fit and things to make it. Um, you know, I, I don't know if we, we fill a role in our family, but definitely Kim paves the way. Uh, for all sure. of us. And, and I try and fill in, you know, the, the supportive brother on, on the backside. So. Yeah. I mean, it really, it hit me again, having known you guys for so long, you know, I've got one older brother that, you know, well, Dave, it just is interesting, like how you can take some of these lessons. We've talked a lot about how you apply them into the workspace. Right. But also like how it lines up in your personal life, like, you know, and how, what's the lifespan of, let's say a queen bee. So a queen bee will live for anywhere between two and five years, which is okay. a super long time. Bees live all year long in theory. Uh, right. If you're a forager bee uh, during the springtime, you will literally, you know, you live between like three and five weeks. You will, you'll will work till your wings fall off. You're that dedicated to the colony. Oh if you're a winter bee though, you'll live for three to five months because all you're doing is hanging out inside the colony and shivering. That's what they do to stay warm. Uh, wow. They generate heat. Um, what so. about in a colony? And this is kind of going back to leadership. And then I've got a couple more things I want to kind of connect. There's so many things you can apply to what you're doing. But if a queen bee dies, does the colony ever go without a leader? Or is there like, this is actually, I'm realizing, is there a, is there a peaceful transfer of power? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I really go no, there, there isn't. I really no, didn't, yeah. I didn't plan for that day. I did not plan. <laughs> No, but say, Perfect. Gosh, I can't say anything without saying, no, is there a transfer? How does that work? Or is there a period of time where they're kind of like in, in, in flux? So here's the fascinating thing. Yes, absolutely. There, there's a period of time where things are in flux and it, it gets, gets really chaotic. Okay. Uh, but, but let's back up before that. Even if like the queen is there, 
the colony actually runs the roost. So everybody makes a common, you know, it's misconception of there's one queen and she's in charge. She tells everybody what to do. When in reality, she's sort of like, she's sort of like the symbol or the figurehead. Um, is, is it Margaret Thatcher? She's like the Margaret Thatcher. Like she, you know, she's like the person. Is that the right? Am I referring well, the to the queen? In, in, yeah, in the queen. England. There you go. Yeah. The queen yeah. yeah. So like the, the role for the queen of England, like literally she fills a role or position, but you know, in the end, like the queen bee in, in, in the hive, if the colony doesn't really like her, they actually replace her. They will get a new one or they'll make a new one. And she really doesn't have anything to say about it. Like she's out, like that's it. She stops laying, she's not very productive. Again, it's all about the greater good. The, the, um, the super organism that is the hive is made up of many little pieces. And when the super organism is in danger because the leader is no good, guess what? Gonzo, you know, it's time for a new queen. And so they will raise a new queen off of the, the offspring um, of, that, of that current queen. They'll feed her extra royal jelly, which makes her develop um, you know, organs that she needs to reproduce. And then uh, they'll either kick the old queen out, they'll kill her, or she'll go out and swarm somewhere else. There's a lot of different ways, but you'll immediately know if there's a, a leadership or a queen problem again because, because of that sound um, you know, that the overall hive will make. Totally random, but I hope you're gonna get this, Jay, because you're brilliant. Do you ever watch like shows like Game of Thrones or stuff and be like, oh, that's happening in the colony? Like, do you ever totally. watch a drama? Totally. On, d does that happen? 100% all, all the time. But, you know, my wife is tired of hearing me talk about it. So I usually can't keep it to myself. Oh, you, but you it's totally true. Absolutely. We're not tired of talking about it. Yeah. Don't, don't, <laughs> yeah. Obviously, she's heard them all. But like, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to this. I'm like, oh, this is like a series. It's like a drama. And then like the, the bee, the queen bee's gone and they're going to add a jelly roll to the new queen bee. And that queen bee is going <laughs> to take over and then the, uh, the the other bees are flapping so hard that they're dying and and then there's yeah. a drone i mean my goodness it, it's it's a it's a it's a netflix series yeah it's days of our hives right it's <laughs> it's it's absolute drama every single day and that's why i love it right that's what hooks you that's what sucks you in and wants you to keep going back and checking on your bees and seeing what's going to happen next and like you know we haven't figured this out that's the best part of this whole process i i actually think beekeeping and, and leadership and everything might be kind of boring if we had it all perfectly figured out. It's like, it's any man or woman's game, right? Like we are constantly, we're like the inventors. Like, let me figure, let me try and figure out what's gonna solve the problem. How it's gonna save the bees, what's gonna save this colony. Uh, and we don't know. And I absolutely love that. I think that that challenge gets me up in the morning uh, because of that drama you're talking about, totally. Jay, that's so good. That's it. I mean, there's no way I'm gonna try to go past uh, be, uh, uh, hives of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's called. That's, I mean, that's it. I, there's, you, you said it so well, we're still in the process. You are a, a rookie for life. I mean, I'm only just resharing what you share just to amplify it and to let people really understand. Cause you, you go quick. And again, I don't want you to ever be desensitized to the message you're sharing. Jay, I think it's, it's needed more than ever right now. You and I've talked about that being a rookie for life, being truthful, listening to people's needs. But I love what you said. This is just such a, a fascinating drama. I think the most interesting thing about this, um, and I hope our listeners can really parlay this into their lives, is being able to stay focused amidst chaos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Last mm -hmm. thing for you, what are you doing that you take from the B community that you apply on a kind of a, just a basic daily basis for Jay Williams and his wife and children to just improve, like your family, what is it you're, what's a good to do that you apply that could be accessible to others? Again, it's gonna be really simple, uh, twofold. So one thing that I have used from the bees that I apply every single day is obviously to be humble and to stop and take a moment. So. Um, and to be transparent. So, you know, let's be honest, everybody is struggling right now. And, and I'm absolutely with them. Like, this is a tough time for everybody. Uh, you know, we're juggling multiple jobs, kids running everywhere. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's chaos around us. And the way that I am getting through it is that I wake up early every single morning and I get up and I don't do anything like data driven, right? I'm not like, I'm not answering emails. I'm not working on spreadsheets. I'm not doing anything. Um, I'm doing things that are creative and that make me focus and make me, uh, you know, dream uh, and create, uh, you know, new things, new plans, new new projects, whatever. Every single day, I get up around five a.m. and I spend a good hour and a half before everybody else gets up, 
And that's what gets me going through the day because that's my supercharge, right? Yeah, I'm drinking coffee, but that's like my, you know, my cerebral coffee is like, okay, what can I create? What can I come up with that's really fun and interesting? And, you know, don't try and do that at three in the afternoon or at 11 o'clock at night. Um, because, you know, in these, this day and age, again, we're, we're juggling so many things that, you know, my day is usually 5 a.m. to around 11 or 30, uh, 1130 at night. Wow. So it's a long day. And at the end of the day, that's not where I'm going to be the sharpest with my creativity and my, you know, my overall goals and my plans for life, you know, my, my leadership philosophy. Like if you want to develop your leadership philosophy and like, what is your mantra? Like, who are you and where are you going? Yeah. In my opinion, you do that first thing in the morning. Uh, you, you pick that time, right. And, and that's, and sometimes the bees make me focus on that. If I get up early in the morning, you know, and I'm, um, I'm doing something important with the bees, uh, that's usually the best time to do it. Everything is very calm, very quiet and very focused. And that's where you connect the most with what you're doing and where you're going. I love it, Jay. That's it. I, uh, I just want to just remind everyone listening, like everything you shared, Jay, is why we wanted you on as a guest. It is practical. It is simple, but in like, I say a complex way, but it's simple because you've worked to make it simple. Everything you shared is doable and it doesn't have to take a B column. That's what I think is great. Mm -hmm. Your journey yeah. was television, film production, into firefighting, into beekeeping and so much more all focused around chaos. But what I love is everything you shared is free. It's in us. And uh, I love it. It is so perfect. My friend, I appreciate you so much. If, if you are listening, uh, please share this with others and let people know. And if you're watching this on YouTube, um, let us know and notify us and, and share the message. Jay, our goal is to amplify unique and kind and humble voices that are doing practical things that are good, that are good for our community, that are good for our, for, for your humanity and you're doing it. And I appreciate you so much, man. Thank you for being a guest and sharing your time. Keep this going. Okay. Thanks for having me on. It was awesome, man. Yeah. Anytime. <laughs> hives of our lives. <laughs> Jelly rolls and hives of our lives. Mm -hmm.